Welcome back everybody. Today we'll be talking about the geometric meanings of position, velocity, and the acceleration vectors. So to be again, we're going to have to know the path of a particle traveling through space. So we're going to use uh, this arbitrary path that's going to be noted by this gray, gray line. And it's going from here to here. And what we're going to do is actually plot the position of the particle or object as it travels through this path. So this should be very straightforward. So what we're going to do is use the origin and use this to for our reference point and define a position vector that goes from the origin to this point right here. And then we're going to do the same thing for some time later for another position vector sometime over here. So the initial position vector is I'm going to define it as R of T. So this path is actually a parameterization with respect to time. So it, although it lives in the x, y plane, it is parameterized with the variable t, which is time. So then the second position vector, some time later, is going to be r of t plus delta t. So this is basically the definition of the position vector. It maps a position relative to some origin. So if you have a sum function of r with respect to t, you can find the particle's position at any given moment of time if you know the value of t that you're looking for. Our next goal is actually to define the object's or the particle's velocity at any given moment of time. So to do that, we're going to look at the difference between these two position vectors. So the difference is going to be delta r, and that's going to be r of t plus delta t minus r of t, and all these are vectors. The difference between two position vectors, if we look on the graph, is simply the distance from here to here. So if you remember how to add and subtract vectors, that's basically what you're doing with r of t plus delta t and r of t. So you're just taking this vector r of t plus delta t, rotating this r of t vector 180 degrees, and then adding it to this vector. So one thing we didn't include in this is actually the time variable. So we can look at the ratio of the, uh, the difference vectors, so delta r over some given amount of time, and take that same difference and divide it by delta t over here. So whenever you have some displacement divided by some time, that gives you a velocity vector. But this is an average velocity. We can actually do better than that because we can use this idea of the definition of the derivative to actually get the instantaneous velocity vector. So to do that, all we have to do is take the limits as delta t approaches zero. And if you remember back in calculus, this is actually the formal definition of the derivative but in a vector format. So what we can say is that the velocity vector, because we could say that delta r over delta t is the same as the average velocity. If we let that delta t go to zero, we could say that the instantaneous velocity vector is going to be dr dt, where r is a function of time. So what that means, if you let r of t plus delta t and let that delta t go to zero, that vector will get closer to the original position vector as delta t gets very, very close to zero. And what you notice, is that the velocity vector itself becomes more and more closer to becoming tangent to the curve. Therefore, what we can say is as delta t approaches zero, the velocity vector, the instantaneous velocity vector, will be tangent to the path of motion. And this is independent on how you define your origin. And let me show you what I mean by that. So I drew a new origin, it's in red instead of black. And what I want to show you is that the position vector can be defined in at any different origin, but the displacement between those two vectors, or the difference between those two vectors, are always going to be the same. So if we drew a position vector that drew from this origin, which is r of t, and then r of t plus delta t, if we take the difference between those two vectors, that's going to still be delta r. So if I call this maybe r of t prime, and then this is going to be r of t plus delta t prime, I could say that the difference between those two vectors is going to be delta r, and that's going to equal r of t plus delta t minus r of t also equals r of t plus delta t prime minus r of t prime. And these are all vectors. 
So when you take the difference between two position vectors, what you actually get is displacement, which means it's a state function, meaning it's independent of the path. So you can have a particle traveling in this general path, but if you map out the position vector, say this is the origin, r, and this is r, and this is some r later, the difference between these two vectors will always be this vector right here, regardless if you define the origin differently. If you define the origin here and define this as r1 and this as r2, geometrically the vector will always be, uh, the difference between these two vectors will always be this red vector, delta r. So it doesn't matter how the particle changes over time, the position vector maps out the two different points and when you take the difference, it becomes a state function. So it only depends on the initial and final state. And that's basically the idea of displacement. So the reason why I wanted to specify that the origin doesn't matter is because sometimes you have to define the origin yourself and when it comes to these dynamics problems. So it is always convenient, it is always best for you to find the most convenient origin for you to map out the particle's motion, which allows you to make the problem easier or harder for yourself. So with that being said, we can actually define velocity as we did earlier, and we can say that the velocity vector is always tangent to the path of motion. It will never point any other direction besides tangent to the path of motion. And obviously the vector itself will point in the direction of motion as well. So if the particle is moving from here to here, the velocity vector will point tangent to that curve in this direction. So our next goal is to actually find the acceleration vector. So I'm gonna de redefine that path. So this is gonna be some arbitrary path like that. And since we know that the velocity vector is tangent to every point on the path, so we could take some velocity vector, and this is parameterized as well. So this is gonna be the velocity vector of, uh, with respect to time. And then some time later, we're gonna have this velocity vector, which is tangent to this path, which is V, of t plus delta t. So now we could actually define the acceleration vector. So the acceleration vector is gonna be, uh, we could define the average for now. It's gonna be the change in velocity over the change in time. So if we take the difference between these two vectors, that's gonna be the change in velocity. So this is t plus delta t minus v of t, and then divide this by the change in time, this is gonna give you that average velocity vector. And if you take the difference of these two vectors, geometrically what you're doing, you're taking V of T delta plus delta T, which points in this general direction, and you're rotating V of T 180 degrees and adding it to this vector. So it will look something like this. So this is going to be V of T, the negative version, and this is gonna be V of T plus delta T. And when you add those two, point, uh, two vectors together, you're gonna get a resulting vector that points in this direction, which we're gonna call V average. So the acceleration vector might look something like this, but what's special about the acceleration vector is that the acceleration vector always points within the concavity of the curve. So no matter what, if you take some velocity vector that is which is always tangent to the curve, you will always have the acceleration vector point within the concavity of the curve. That will always be true. Now the orientation of the acceleration vector is dependent on the velocity vector. So that means that the acceleration vector doesn't have to be perpendicular to the path vector. It can be perpendicular, but that is not the most general case for the acceleration vector. Well, the only thing you can say definitely is that the acceleration vector will always point within the concavity of the curve. You will never see an acceleration vector that points like this when the concavity is going along this direction. So since this is an average, what we can, we can actually do better by using our concepts of limits. So we can take the, the limit as delta t approaches zero. And again, this right here is just a definition of the derivative, the formal definition. So we could say that the acceleration vector is simply the derivative of the velocity vector with respect to time. So now I wanna talk about a special case of the acceleration vector. So let's say the velocity vector is changing over time, but its magnitude of the velocity vector 
is actually constant. So a very basic example is just this rotational motion. So let's say the particle is going in a perfect circle, going in this general direction. If we take the difference between maybe this vector and this vector that's very, very close to this point over here, we can actually say that the acceleration vector will be perpendicular to the tangent line at that given point. So we can say that the acceleration vector is perpendicular to this tangent line, or in other words, it points directly towards the center of the circle. So this is the only time when you can actually define the acceleration vector beyond just pointing in the concavity of the curve. And that's simply because the velocity vector's magnitude does not change with time. However, the velocity vector does change with time because, again, you can look at this vector right here and this vector over here, which are both tangent to the curve, but you can see that the orientation or the direction of the velocity vector changes, but not the magnitude. So right here is just a special case. But in general, if you have a path that looks like this, the acceleration vector can point in any direction that is within the concavity of the curve. So the acceleration vector might point in that direction. It might even point perpendicularly, or it could be pointing in this direction. It is not strictly defined unless you know a little bit more about the velocity of the particle. But the one thing we can say for sure is that the acceleration points within the concavity of the path. Now you might be saying, what if the particle doesn't actually change uh, direction of the path? So, that, so what you're basically saying is that the particle is moving along a straight line. So if you have a particle that moves along a straight line, so this is from one state to another state, so this would be one to two, the acceleration vector will lie on this line. So if the particle is accelerating, it will be on the line itself and move over to the right. So this would be the acceleration vector, meaning the particle is accelerating from one to two. Or the acceleration vector might point in this direction, and again, it's on the line of motion, then we'll say that the particle is actually de-accelerating. And again, for the velocity vector for a linear path, will just, again, be tangent or actually collinear with the path in motion. So this will be the particle um, the particle's velocity. So that is everything about the geometric meanings of position, displacement, and how we use those concepts of displacement and position to derive the, uh, the quantities of velocity and acceleration. And again, there is some geometric properties of all these vectors. So the displacement, again, is dependent, is not dependent on how you define your origin. And the velocity vector will always be tangent to the path of motion. And the velocity vector will also point in the direction of motion. And then the acceleration vector, is, it can't be strictly defined unless you know a little bit more about the velocity. And, but we can say that the acceleration vector will point within the concavity of the path. And then again, a very special case is that if the path is, is circular, then we can say the acceleration vector is always perpendicular to the tangent line of the point we're looking at. Or in other words, the acceleration vector points directly towards the center of the circle. And there's another special case if the particle is moving along a straight line, meaning the path doesn't curve then the acceleration vector and the velocity vector lie on the line. And the direction of those vectors depend on how the particle's velocity is changing over time. So that should be everything you need to know in terms of the geometry of these vectors. So hopefully that helped you, and I'll see you in the next video.